like a fair. Can I get screen sharing? Yes. I think you should be co-host. It doesn't let me do it. Um, Alyssa, can you do it? I was supposed to do it. Thank you. <laughs> cool. You're a co-host now. Thank you. All righty. You guys can see this, I'm assuming, yes. All right, so this is the presentation for the amazing Academic Affairs Senators. So first we have Mason Decker, who is the Senator for the Business School. Oh, one second, there we go. All right, uh, Mason has been working with Interim Dean Thomas Donnelly on his personal student advisory board to help improve the relationship between he and the students and provide an increase in transparency between the college's administration and students. Uh, Mason has met with Dean Donnelly to discuss problems presented in SGA meetings as well as by fellow business students. Um, from Mason, he seems genuinely interested in what I and other students have to say. Uh, Mason is currently working on a scholarship slash informative bi-weekly newsletter for business students. From Mason again, I've been in contact with business school administrators such as Karen Burgard and recently presented it to interim Dean Donnelly. He is also hoping to get this going by the start of winter quarter. And if you guys have any questions for the senators um, based off of the presentation, you guys can feel free to ask them personally or directly um, after I finish for those who are here. Next, we have Erica, who is the Senator for the College of Computing and Digital Media, also known as CDM. Uh, Erica has worked on making resources like the library and computer labs accessible to students this semester. Uh, she has joined the mental, mental Health Committee to prioritize mental health amongst Paul students who are currently experiencing stress and pressure from extenuating circumstances like COVID and the mayhem that was the elections. What's next? Uh, Erica plans to work hand in hand with Dean Miller over winter break to bridge the gap between administration and students. For the winter quarter, Erica hopes to make online experiences with DePaul a better learning and social experience for all students. Oh, excuse me. And she would like to also improve attendance at general body meetings uh, because she values the voice of students as we are all vital pieces in our community. Lastly, Erica hopes to collaborate with other senators and members on initiatives. So if you guys need any help, please reach out to Erica. Kevin, who is the Senator for College of Education. Kevin is currently working with students and faculty at the College of Education, otherwise known as COE, to create an organization that would examine curriculums that are either biased or racist. This uh, organization within the College of Education will seek ways to change them, being the curriculum, so that they are more equitable and inclusive. Kevin is also continuing his relationship with Dean Zoinks. Um, they are looking at policy regarding grade challenges. From Kevin, I am trying to potentially change the policy that so that it is easier for students to actually change their, their grade. Senator Mariana Biker. She is the Senator for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Um, she has been working on LAS sustainability. Um, so when we are back on campus, she would like to make double-sided printing a requirement. I'm sorry if you heard that, that is my roommate. Um, <laughs> and uh, researching the type of light bulbs used in buildings and ensuring the most efficient, efficient materials are being implemented. Uh, she has also worked with Wesley and other members of the sustainability committee. Um, she is also working to make university-wide lectures accessible to all students on D2L. So what this means is say from say people in the college of I don't know college of education have lectures. She wants to make those lectures available to students who are in the business school and etc. 
Um, and lastly, she is hoping to expand diversity within LAS. Our next senator is Brianna. She is the senator for the School of Music. Brianna is a current member of the Dean Review Board Committee uh, for the School of Music. So what this committee does is reviews the current dean um, because they are up for reappointment after five years. Um, so she is on the committee with a host of other faculty and staff um, to decide if this dean should be reappointed. Um, well, actually, the, she gives recommendations, the committee gives recommendations to the provost who then decides. Um, next, we have, she, wants, she would like to increase transparency between students and faculty and staff. Um, she would like to find ways for students to be a part of the decision-making process. And lastly, Brianna is looking to restart the student government organization within the School of Music. Our next senator is Saba. She is the senator for the College of Health and Science. She has been trying to facilitate and increase communication between CSH faculty and staff and students. Um, she has been in contact with Dean Stephanie T. Dance Barnes, uh, who she has been in contact with her to host a series of Zoom luncheons uh, with her. This gives CSH students the opportunity to ask questions or express any concerns they have where the dean can answer, in which the dean can then answer. She and Dean Dance Barnes, Barnes have been working to bring more diversity and, and inclusion to CHS. CSH, I'm sorry. <laughs> From Saba, she says, I've also been working with the Dean on how to rebrand CSH website so that it reflects that we are a diverse college and want to work with minorities within the college to help advocate for them in any way that we can so that they are given an equal opportunity to succeed. So, you guys may think that that is it, but we have one more presentation from Hema, which is on a separate document. One second. <coughs> Y'all can see this, yes? Yes. Um, so, hack what hacks you. Uh, Tema's main focus this quarter is understanding how polarization has impacted us at DePaul on our campus. Um, an initiative for the 2020-2021 academic year to pave a path to pave a path towards instilling healthy and constructive dialogue at DePaul University in a post-Trump era in tech-driven <laughs> Senator, as you, or, I'm sorry, Hema, as you can see, is the Senator for College of Communications. Polarization, temperatures rise in 2016. Some context, uh, Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, and the pre 2016 presidential elections, National division fueled by exploiting our deepest fears, rage, and values cross aisles. Um, those are political aisles. And has this taken a hit? And she asked, has this taken a hit on university campuses like DePaul's and our, and our student and faculty social, emotional, emotional, and academic well-being and endeavors? So we're going to watch this two and a half minute video, just kind of providing more background, I guess. In 2014, you may have taken a quiz online, something that looked like this. And if you did, you probably shared your personal data and your friend's personal data with the company that worked for President Trump's 2016 campaign. Here's how it happened. It begins with a research firm, Cambridge Analytica. CEA partnered with a UK-based academic, Alexander Cogan, who was using Facebook data for research purposes. Quizzes were sent to around 300,000 Americans. They looked innocuous, over a hundred personality traits to agree or disagree with. And you got paid less than five dollars. But there was a catch. To take the survey, you had to log into Facebook, which gave Kogan access to your profile, including your birth date, location, and most importantly, your Facebook likes. Kogan combined the quiz results with your Facebook data to develop a psychometric model a sort of personality profile. He then combined this with voter records and sent them to Cambridge Analytica. 
CA claimed that these models were the heart of how they profiled you, your neuroses and other exploitable traits. But Kogan and CA didn't stop there. His app also grabbed the personal data of your Facebook friends and compiled similar profiles of them. In just months, 270,000 people took Kogan's survey and the data of up to 87 million friends was also harvested, close to one quarter of all US Facebook users. CA then used that data to target people, maybe you, with political messaging. CA said this targeting helped the Trump campaign strategy, but the campaign disputes this. Kogan's work claimed to be for academic research, but he also shared your information with Cambridge Analytica, a violation of Facebook's policies. So was it a data breach? Facebook says no, that no passwords were stolen and no systems were infiltrated. But Mark Zuckerberg has said it was a breach of trust between Facebook and its users. The US Federal Trade Commission is investigating the case. So that video kind of just gives some background, I guess, on the issue, um, you know, transparency for one, um, and companies profiting off of our data. Um, so that's really what Hema is trying to hone in on and make people aware of. Oops. Sorry. All right, so one year, five steps. These are Hema's steps to, you know, making people more aware of the issue. Um, so the first is implementing a roundtable conference with faculty and staff. Um, this is to um, gauge how the issue has impl impacted them, um, if, to see if they're even aware of the issue, and to see how their students um, are, you know, reacting to it. Um, so the goal of this roundtable is to find a mentor, um, and then help that mentor will then help Hema to push the initiative forward. Uh, the next thing that she would like to do is survey, um, is release a survey uh, to collect and assess data from students primarily. And then the next would be screening the social dilemma. Um, and during this, she will provide incentives for people to come, uh, whether that be gift cards, et cetera. Um, and if for those who aren't familiar with the social dilemma, uh, it really is like a longer version of the video I just showed. Um, and then implementing Open Mind. Um, Open Mind is a platform that introduces the topic of polarization and helps students and whoever uses the platform uh, reflect on the issue. Um, Hema would like to, for professors to use this platform um, and then engage student responses um, and then just implement those responses into their classroom and how they operate on a daily basis. Um, she would first like to use this and uh, explore and discover classes first as kind of like a trial run, just to see how it'll go. Um, and then next is concurrent workshops. So she, Hema is a part of um, Youth for Humane Tech, this, which is an organization um, and that and she, from this organization, she would like to bring different workshops, um, just again, talking about the issue um, and talking about the issue and bringing it to the Paul's campus. So um, this is from Hema. Slack me if you're down to form an ad hoc committee. Um, in this ad hoc committee, you will be researching, doing marketing, promotion, um, and just educating people. And then for the movie, uh, add the social dilemma to your Netflix list. Slack me with your thoughts and um, lastly, try out Open Mind. Um, there's a demo version, go for it. Uh, first trial run with SGA is a suggestion that she had um, just to see how it work and before it goes to the classrooms. And I'll drop this link in the, uh, the chat, that way you guys can look at it if you would like. Are there any questions? If you have questions, 
um, for the senators that are present, you can ask them directly. But for those who aren't present, uh, I'll take those questions. Uh, I had a question about one of the other senators you mentioned with our, um, was something you mentioned with uh, Mariana. Um, yes. Mentioned it, so uh, you said, I don't believe I. I'll pull Mariana. up the slide real quick. Okay, go ahead, David. Um, is Mariana present? No, she's not. Or, okay. Anyway, um, this kind of relates to what I was mentioning before. Um, but the uh, research and the type of light bulbs used in buildings. Um, in addition, so something that's been happening downtown, um, oh, actually across the city, is um, the uh, the city has been replacing street lights, uh, street light bulbs from sodium vapor to LED. Um, the Illinois Tollway has been doing the same thing. Uh, that means a pretty common thing. I mean, uh, sodium vapor is relatively efficient, all things considered, um, but LEDs are uh, even cheaper in the long run. Um, however, with the switch to LED bulbs, um, particularly with street lights, they've been moving towards these really, really um, high, color, high color temperature white, really blue uh, bulbs. Um, and they have the same they, they, they have the same kind of problems that uh, fluorescents have for uh, people with light sensitivity. Uh, a lot of people, the uh, blue lights are a trigger for migraines. Um, and uh, also there's some, re there's some research that suggests that blue light can interfere with people's circadian rhythms, et cetera. So um, anyway, I just thought I would bring that up uh, uh, to working with Wesley and the Sustainability Committee. Um, as far as light bulbs used in buildings, um, I just wanted to mention, I think it's important that um, uh, health and accessibility uh, be taken into account as well. So that's all. Thank, thank you for bringing that to the forefront. Because um, when I, just looking at it um, at, on its surface, that's something that you know, I really didn't consider. Um, but oh, I'm, yeah. sure uh, that, I'm sure that once she you know, is, actually trying to implement this that all those things would be taken into consideration but i think that but it, unless someone mentions it a lot of times it just doesn't get people just don't think of it um sure. and it's really just a matter of when somebody in facilities is ordering light bulbs the led company's like so would you like would you like 2700 kelvin would you like 3000 kelvin would you know, and um there is this weird assumption that people just really, really like daylight bulbs, which are very, very, very blue. And um, so, yeah, you'd, you'd think that you'd think that that would be taken into account by default, but generally it doesn't. So that's why I mentioned it. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, thank you guys for listening. I hope I did my senators justice. Thank you so much, Keith. And awesome job, everybody. That was so cool. And I said, like, that's my senator for Saba. One, because she's my best friend, but two, she's also the Center for College of Science and Health. That's my college. I'm not showing favoritism, I promise. Um, who is next? Okay, cool. Next, we have Student Affairs with Marcus. Hold on, can we all just, like, say hi to Landon? First, like, what are you doing here, bud? How are you doing? Hey, everybody. We're recording, hey. by the way. How are you? I <laughs> uh, just want to stop by. I don't want to, like, take up too much time. I am a guest, but, uh, you know. Great. Thanks, Bertha. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, student Affairs is going to be a much more pared-down presentation. I'm just going to, like, do the highlights, and if anybody asks questions, um, we can go more in-depth from there. Um, but we've got uh, three really good, two new senators in our committee that have like just started running as soon as they got started here. Um, first off, Adora, she's serving on the Illinois, Illinois Board of Higher Ed, um, doing a lot of important things. Um, their next meeting is next Friday and uh, they're gonna be working on strategic planning for universities, navigating through the pandemic and budget cuts. Adora also, Recently met up with Rick Marecci about initiatives she's, that she's uh, working on that are 
going to call for halal and kosher meal plans, which is a really fantastic idea, I think. Something that probably should have been done a long time ago. Um, next, we've got Cindy. Uh, Cindy also started as soon as she got elected. Um, she is working on a resolution about early registration and enrollment priority for her constituency commuter students, which uh, probably most of us on this call are going to be considered commuter students at DePaul. Um, and then finally, Francesca, first off, has been the rock of student affairs. Uh, our committee this year has gone through just like crazy changes. Uh, <laughs> we had a vice president get elected out of our committee. Um, the chair or the uh, EVP, my seat, is now our president. And we have two new people. And Francesca has been there through it all, just like being steady, uh, keeping the ship steady for us. Um, she's also picking up my slack in the mental health ad hoc committee um she's in the sustainability committee she's uh hosted an election event um she met with the head of health and wellness in ucs uh to push free mental health care and other really important initiatives and uh yeah francesca has been a rock star um so that's student affairs uh if anybody's got questions the floor is open I don't see any hands up. Oh, Francesca, go ahead. Um, also, that's my EVP. This man is killing it and he doesn't give himself enough credit, so. Thank you for the charity. <laughs> it's not at all. I miss you guys so much. That's my old committee. I'm sad. <laughs> oh, but cool. Great work, everybody. Um, next, I'm going to hand it over to Robbie for diversity and equity. Thank you, Watfa. Um, similar to Marcus, I'm kind of just going to give a rundown, highlights. Um, any questions you have, uh, you can wait until the end. Thank you. Um, so first, I'm going to start with Garo, the Senator for Intercultural Awareness. Um, Garo has been very involved, um, not only within the frameworks of SGA, but outside of the institution, um, especially with her work with the Chartwell's efforts um, and Union One, um, phenomenal job. And we are also working, um, Garo along with Jess and Miranda um, have been working uh, with OMSS. We've been meeting with the PAs and we hope to meet more often um, after finals are over to see how we can be of more support as the trial end date approaches uh, in the winter quarter. So I'm very excited to work, also work with them on that. Um, and something that Garo also wants to work on is bringing in more folks that aren't necessarily a part of the administration. As we witnessed last week when President Esteban stopped by, um, there were, um, some moments of frustration and there was a conversation on who we should be giving space to when it comes to guests that we invite for general body meetings. So I think it's really important that we highlight the um, and uplift the voices of those who have been involved in activist work um, on and off campus. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud of Gato for taking that into consideration and bringing that to my attention. And that leads me to Jess, um, Jessica, the Senator for Mission and Ministry. Um, as we all know, Jessica has been working very hard on the dialogues that we have been having with Father Memo and the um, other faculty members of Mission and Ministry. Um, Jess is also the president of Kalahi and so I really, um, commemorate her work because it's very hard to um, kind of like balance all that work out um, with so much going on, especially in the midst of a pandemic. Um, so yeah, Jess is also working on also getting more student representation and voices included in the implementation process and review process when it comes to how the Board of Trustees determines um, what and what shouldn't, um, what should and shouldn't be included in the new mission statement. 
And uh, some future goals that Jessica wants to work on is uh, also kind of changing how service-based scholarships are offered because um, often folks don't take into consideration that folks that participate in activist work are also in a way and are um, contributing to the communities that they're working with and fighting for and fighting with. And so perhaps taking an approach where activism and activist work is included when discussing and applying for service-based scholarships. Um, so thank you, Jessica, for all of your hard work. Um, it's very appreciated and I'm very proud of all of you, all of the members of my committee. Um, Miranda is working with Vanessa and Yesenia, who are faculty members at the Office of Multicultural Student Success, um, to work on generating a newsletter that can be sent out um, either bi-weekly or weekly um, that highlights resources, information, um, opportunities that could be of importance because um, from what Miranda says and what you know, some first generation students experience is that um, as a first generation student entering a new institution, it can be challenging, especially when it comes to navigating a new institution. And so um, great work Miranda on generating that newsletter and uh, the Senator for International Students, uh, recently elected, um, McGee, um, thank you uh, for running for SGA. And uh, you know, um, any, I look forward to meeting with you more often as well. Um, and yeah, I will take any questions. If there are any, if not, um, yeah. And then Jessica is also a part of the uh, USS committee as well. Um, yeah, uh, very proud of all of you. Um, yeah, thank you. Awesome, thank you, Robbie. Awesome job, everybody. Um, the last committee we have is operations with Wesley. Cool, so I have a PowerPoint, so I guess I'm more formal tonight, which is fine. Um, so we can get started. So obviously, Operations Committee, um, a rather interesting committee that covers literally every single student because it covers most of our years. So I'm going to go in the year order. So starting with Alec, uh, he's the newest member of the Operations Committee. He was just selected a few weeks ago. Um, but despite this, he's been hard at work, um, collaborating with other centers and supporting supports running the election, resources, and whatnot. Um, he's still early on with all of his initiatives. But he has a ton of great ideas from his campaign. Um, so I took a bunch from there just because that really. Tons of time to talk about them, ending unpaid internships, expanding resources and support for queer and LGBTQ plus students, and the connection between DePaul and the FOP. Um, and then I, that is pretty much what he's been working on. Um, obviously, he's one of our new senators, so he's still kind of getting his feet wet, but he was asking questions from President Esteban last week, and I was proud of that. I was like, anyone who's asking a question has the courage to do so, I'm proud of them, whether they're in my committee or not. So kudos to anyone who did ask a question um, who's new. Next, um, Juliana, Southern for second year students. Um, she's been hard at work serving her constituents, and always asking really good questions at our committee meetings and just asking good questions in general. Um, she's been passionate about increasing accessibility to the student food pantry, meeting with Rick Marisi, um, and seeing what can be done despite the online environment. Um, she also has a number of other initiatives she's looking to pursue in the winter quarter, including increasing outreach. She just messaged me earlier during this meeting about another initiative, um, so I didn't include it in here newsletter stuff um, about increasing knowledge of resources. I think that's something that she's really interested in doing. Um, and also some of the things she sits on, she is on the J board um, and the speaker review board. So kudos to that. Um, next is Brandon, Center for Third Year Students. Center for Third Year Students, he brings a lot of um, experience, obviously two years of experience at DePaul, um, and experience with political activism and civic engagement. Um, so the continuing transition experience in a virtual environment has been a big concern for Brandon. Has been Fundamentally shifting how he looks at his initiatives. Obviously, you know, a lot of us kind of expected the fall to be, you know, back in person. We didn't know then what it would look like when we were running in April. Um, so a lot of time this falls and focus on the election, building initiatives for the next two quarters and working on how to address being a center in the online environment. I think all of us, you know, all of senators are working on this. Um, so it's something that we're continuing to do. Um, and he also serves on J Board and the 
Speech Expression um, Advisory Committee, SEEP. Um, so Johnny, who is the next person up, also sits on that. He says some other things, but I'll mention that in a second. Um, so Johnny has a lot of experience in SGA and just, you know, he's a fourth year student. Um, or I think so. You, I think you're in the law school thing now. Um, so he's got a lot of experience and he's going to law school, going to be a lawyer. Kudos for that in, in general. Um, but he's been kind of picking up on some of the work from the holder position last year regarding graduation, but also is continuing stuff that got canceled in the spring, um, an event focused on grad and law school and resources surrounding those in fall, working on that with the Career Center. Um, he's also been a really active member at GB, I feel like I always hear him motioning and seconding, which is really great. Like, I feel like most of our motions move to discussion with a voter from Johnny or he's seconding. So he knows his stuff and he's doing it and he's active in meetings and I, I, I enjoy that. Um, and as I mentioned, he sits on CRB, J board, SEEK, um, and he finished reviewing the Dean of the College of Law recently. So many, many things. Um, last Senator, Judy, Center for Sustainability. Um, she has a host of experiences and expertise in sustainability before she even joined SGA. Um, she's continuing to advocate for the call to be more sustainable. Um, she's had so many ideas, like we have this whole spreadsheet, or not this whole spreadsheet, whole like document, just tons of ideas, that's a sustainability newsletter, and many different smaller things that like I might not catch or things that like little tips and things to be more sustainable to follow that we're working on implementing. Um, she's obviously working with the Sustainability Ad Hoc Committee. Um, she also serves on the Facility Operations Committee with myself. Uh, meeting with the folks behind much of the environmental side of sustainability. And that is pretty much it in terms of my presentation. So if there are any questions, there's like a bajillion chat messages. Um, okay, most of them are just cool things. Any questions? Cool. Awesome. Thank you all so much for presenting and thank you to all the senators for all your hard work. Um, I think it makes everyone feel really good to see what everyone's working on. It's like kind of makes everyone feel more motivated to keep working and doing more. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much. Um, we could stop the recording. <laughs>